on some things I keep close to my fondness for this place. The land remains overwhelming. The hills, the trees, sunrise and sunset, the lake, the moon and the stars, summer clouds. The poets have been right in all these centuries, darling. Even in its astounding imperfection, this earth of ours is magnificent. But oh, this human race, I can hear the sounds you must be uttering in response to this last remark, but this is the way I feel right now. I tell you, there is much to hurt and astound the innocent heart in this world. Much, much, much. A couple of days, I didn't want to do anything but build a tree house and forget it. You know what I mean? There are times when you are sure that peace and symphonies and grass and light and mountains is not to be found in this life. And honey, that is a desperate feeling. Sometimes in this country, maybe just walking down a south side street, or maybe suddenly up in a Harlem window, or maybe in a flash turning the page of one of those picture books from the south, you will see it. Beauty, stark and full. No part of something this, but rather Africa, simply Africa. These thighs and arms, and flying winged cheekbones, these hallowed eyes without negation or apology. A classical people demand a classical art. ripped from me so effortlessly. I want to go back, claim the parts of me that was said to be weak. I want to I'll be able to, truly I'll be able to. These are the words I repeat to remind myself that decolonization takes time. It's an arduous journey and it never ends. I wish it would end. I wish I could cross the finish line and receive a medal and hear the words, yay, you did it. But you see, it's a tiring journey a heartbreaking journey. All this learning and unlearning, it builds you and breaks you. And every time you feel like you've made progress, imperialism, colonialism, and every ism under the sun comes to remind you there's so much work to be done. So much work to be done. 
mean, you see, I haven't even gotten into the decolonization of societies, political structures. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about decolonizing my mind, my tongue, my history, how I view myself and where I'm from. How I view me. And you see, what's funny is education is what blinded me, misguided me, but the, but the right kind of education is what opened my eyes, helped me see the beauty of me and everything I have to offer. And you see, I started this journey when I was 16 years old. And let me tell you, it's been a long, tiring journey. And in as much as I hate having to search high and low for answers, many of which lie beyond the borders of my country, I'm never going to stop trying. I'm never going to stop seeking these answers, these answers that lie in institutions like Oberlin or the British Museum. I'm never going to try to stop trying to find out who I am. Jesus. 